Hi, hi Elise, lovely to see you again. Good to see you. So, um, what have you been doing today at the show, or yesterday actually? Well, at the show I've been covering the land domain for Shepard Media, and one of the big things I've noticed so far is the smorgasbord of unmanned ground vehicles. They're everywhere, everyone's getting in on the action, and a lot of it is developing autonomous systems and plugging it in with, with human operators as well. Right, well, yeah, it seems to be the thing every time we write an article, right? It's everywhere. So have you seen, if everyone's doing it, is anyone doing something particularly interesting? Well, there is one company in particular, it's Aardvark, so it's a British-based company, and they're actually a humanitarian company, so their system isn't a military system, it's designed for disaster relief. And the big thing they've got is that it's a brilliant logistics platform. You can fit two NATO pallets on it, it's got exceptional speed, it's self-loading, um, and they're selling it to a bunch of different clients, so they're looking at police departments in the United States for active shooter scenarios, they're looking at firefighting departments in California, in, um, in Australia to fight the bushfires, and they're also selling it to governments for border control and border protection because it can go about 100 kilometers, that's its range, so it's really, really, really quite effective. And that's one of the things that caught my eye because it's a bit unconventional in that respect. Oh, very cool. And uh, anything else apart from autonomous vehicles that you've seen and that you thought, wow, this is amazing? Um, one of the things that I saw today was at the Ricardo stands, and they um, have developing a hybrid light, uh, light utility vehicle, which was quite impressive. And there's a lot of talk about green investing and green washing and how much of this is, uh, is, is, is hot air or not. But this was one of the first times that I thought it was really, really quite impressive. And actually, the technology is really maturing, so we're probably going to see a lot more electrical vehicles coming uh, in the next five years or so. Oh yeah, that was going to be my question. So you said it's it's a hybrid. It's so it's electrical. How does it work? What's the what's the amazing technology behind it? Well, the main thing is that it's for once it's got a large power supply, so it can it has a far more range than 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 you know uh, other other vehicles we've seen in the past. But also that they're trying to team it with autonomous technology, so a bit like a Tesla or an Uber, but keeping a human in the loop. So you're seeing a lot more commercial technology being applied for defense scenarios. The big question is how much of this is actually going to work in a degraded environment, how much of this is just tech, which looks great in a permissive environment, but when push comes to shove, when the systems are down, how much of this is actually going to work? Well, have you asked them this question? I've asked them the question. They're always very diplomatic about it, and they say, you know, it, it should work. It should work. Right. Well, I guess it's always the same, right? I mean, they come up with the technology and then it needs to be trialed and tested before, you know, they make adjustments for it to be rugged. But no, absolutely. And they're really pushing into the um, what's been seen in the integrated review, obviously the massive bet on tech in the British Army, at least, looking at how we confuse all kinds of data, artificial intelligence. And the technology is starting to mature. Um, Raphael, in particular, have showcased their next generation combat vehicle suite which uses artificial intelligence and that was extremely, extremely impressive because it seems that like they've really developed a technology that works and they're actually saying that it's already been deployed operationally and it's been effective operationally. Wow, that's pretty exciting. And um, so in terms of, have you attended any of the conferences or any of the talks that have been taking place? Uh, I attended a talk with the Deputy Chief of the uh, United States Army. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember his name now, I think it's Peterson. Um, and he gave a very emotional speech um, looking at the last 20 years Years of United States Army efforts, especially in light of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And um, he gave a very, very moving speech and also saying how the United States military has to adapt and retool its forces for great power competition. We've heard this time and time again. And he looked at all the platforms that the United States Army is looking at, whether it's the optionally manned fighting vehicle, long-range fires, new artillery, all that kind of stuff. All the buzzwords were mentioned again. So, um, you know, you, you, can, you can't go to the SAI and not talk about great power competition anymore. That is true. I guess the one question I had uh, before I let you go off and run, as we all do, um, was in his speech, did you have a sense that he was also taking into account all the amazing technologies that we're seeing here? Well, I think it was one of those speeches that well, I don't want to sound too critical here. Um, he, he, there's a lot of faith in the technology. Yeah. Now, the big question is, the United States has already been here before in the 1990s with the revolution in military affairs where technology was meant to change yeah. the nature of war completely and then 9-11 hit and it was a strategic shock and we were going back to counterinsurgency, nuts and bolts type of stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of faith in the technology. The question is how much of a bet is being put on the technology and is the capability there yet? And so that's something that has to be seen. But from what I've noticed is that the technology really is starting to mature. All right, well, this is exciting times. Let's see how it all unfolds. Thanks very much, Sam. Thank you very much, Alex.